Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about java throw and throws with examples so guys we are going to see what is the difference between both these keywords that is throw and throws so guys in java exceptions can be categorized into two types so the very first exception is unchecked exceptions so the definition is they are not checked at compile time but at run time so guys these kind of exceptions are not checked at the compile time but these are checked at the run time so the examples are the arithmetic exceptions so as we had seen previously the divide by 0 expression will come under arithmetic exception then we have null pointer exception if any object is not initialized and we are trying to access the methods of a particular class using that object then we can have a null pointer exception then we also saw array index out of bounds exception that means if we have defined an array and we access an element that is not present inside that array so this exception will occur so guys all these exceptions are not checked at the compile time but at the run time so these can be avoided guys based on our programming practices but what about the checked exceptions these are the exceptions that are checked at the compile time so for example io exception so io exception means in case we have provided the path of a file and that file is not present in the path so we will get an io exception similarly we can have interrupted exceptions as well so guys we can handle these kind of exceptions using two keywords that is one is throw keyword another one is throws keyword so the very first thing is we will see the throws keyword example so over here we are having a find file method so guys let us move to ide over here and what we will do is we will have a method over here inside the same class so we will have public static that's because we are going to access this method from this public static void main we have to use the public static keywords over here and then we have void and then we have find the file over here so guys what this will do is it will check for a particular file in the path so we are going to use the class name that is file so we have the class name as file over here and then followed by the object name so we will have file as the object name over here it will be equal to new file so this file that is a constructor it will take a string path so guys let's say we have a test file test.txt so guys we have just provided the name of a file so this is the path so it will check in the path whether this test.txt file is present or not so guys this file doesn't exist actually in our path over here so we are going to see how the exception can be handled over here and then in order to read this file we will have the file input stream class so we have file input and then as you can see we have file input stream over here and then we will name the object as a stream and then we have new file input stream over here so we have file input stream which takes file as the parameter so we enter this and then provide this file name that is this object name file over here as the parameter and then have the semicolon so guys as you can see there is a red underline over here it says unhandled exception type file not found exception so guys it may so happen that this particular file that we have provided that is test.txt it might not be present in this path so what eclipse is trying to tell us that we have to fix this problem so we have two options over here one is to add throws declaration and then surround with try catch block so guys this surround with try catch block we had already seen previously we can have the lines of codes over here that is these two lines of code inside the try block and then we can have the catch block in in order to handle the exception appropriately but in this example we are going to use the throws declaration that is the first option over here so i'll just select this add throws declaration so guys the moment we provide this add throws declaration as you can see this throws keyword is being used over here and then we have file not found exception over here that is getting appended to this method that is find file before the body of this find file method so guys what we are trying to do over here is instead of having the try catch block over here for these lines of code and handle the exception accordingly within this find file what we are doing is this method is trying to throw this file not found exception from where this method will be called so instead of handling the exception over here within the body of the same method we will throw the exception to that portion of the code from where this find file was called and guys this is the main functionality of this throws keyword over here so what we will do is we will call this function from our main method so over here we will just call this function 
find file but then guys this find file is throwing some exception so as you can see there is a red underline over here it says unhandled exception type file not found so this function is not handling the file not found exception so who is supposed to handle this so basically this is just throwing the file not found exception so over here this main method is responsible in order to handle the exception so we have to have the try catch block over here so we can have try and then inside this try we will call this method over here so we have try block over here and then followed by we have to have the catch block over here we can either have this file not found exception or we can also have the super class as well that is exception over here so we have exception e and then within this we will have the print statement so e dot message is going to print the error message or the exception message that has occurred over here so guys basically this method is being appended by the throws keyword followed by what kind of exception that might occur within this method body and then inside this method body we are not handling the exception but we are just throwing the exception in case if it occurs so this exception needs to be caught by the method that is the main method from where we are calling this find file and as you can see we are enclosing this find file method that is being called with within the try block and then we are also having the catch block as well and it is just going to print the error message let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see test dot text the system cannot find the file specified so this message is getting printed over here and so guys in this way we can easily use the throws keyword in order to throw a particular exception from a method and catch that exception from where that method was called now guys let us move to another example that is for the throw keyword so as you can see for this throw keyword we are having the divide by zero method which is being called from the main method so over here we are having the main method and divide by zero is being called so the control flow will go over here and it says throw new arithmetic exception with a string that is trying to divide by zero so guys we can provide our own string as well in order to throw a particular exception and the important thing over here is we are using this throw keyword over here in order to provide our custom string so guys let us check this with the help of example i'll just remove these lines of code over here and over here what we will have to do is we are going to have public static method which is not going to return anything so this is void and then we have divide by zero as the method name so what this will do it will just throw the exception so we are going to use the throw keyword over here so we have throw keyword followed by new operator and then it is going to throw arithmetic exception so we have arithmetic exception over here and then we are going to use this second method that is going to take the parameter as the string so we will say divide by zero is not allowed and then we have semicolon so guys we are just throwing a new arithmetic exception over here with a particular string so in order to call this method what we will do is we will just call it from the main method that is divide by zero over here so that's it we have just called the divide by zero control flow will go over here and what this will do throw new arithmetic exception that is divide by zero is not allowed let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see exception in thread main arithmetic exception and then we should have the string that is divide by zero is not allowed so guys this is an exception that is occurring which we are not catching currently so we can catch this exception as well where we have to catch we have to catch over here that is inside this main method from where the divide by zero is being called so we have to enclose this line of code within the try block over here so we have the try block over here followed by the catch block and then let's say we use the super class that is exception over here and then we have e over here and then what this is going to do is it is just going to print e dot message so whatever string that is coming as an exception this will be printed over here on console let me just save this file and try running this code now so guys as you can see divide by zero is not allowed so this is a sensible string that we are printing over here only because we have thrown the exception over here but we had not caught it so we were getting multiple lines of code over there which was also saying us that there was an arithmetic exception but we can also have some sensible strings so we have to enclose within the try catch block the line of code that is trying to call the method and we have done the same and provided the get message over here in the print println statement so it is going to print divide by zero is not allowed which we had defined in our arithmetic exception 
exception over here. So guys, hopefully you have got enough knowledge about the throw and throws keywords in Java programs. So guys, that's it in this video. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well. The next video that we are going to talk about is Java catch multiple exceptions with examples. So stay tuned.